and we're joined now by Brad and Tim of 327 Wine Bar. They're the co-owners and founders and co-chefs and everything else of <laughs> the new wine bar down at 327 Somerset. So welcome, guys. Thank you. Hi there. So tell us a little bit about your new space that you've got here. Uh, well, it's a very quaint house on Somerset Street that was formerly Bennett's Bistro. Um, it's the ground floor of the house, a uh, really nice small little spot. We've got a great little patio out front that seats about, uh, we've got it sat for 14 people right now because it's nice and spaced out and comfortable, but we can accommodate uh, as many as 17 in there if we want to. Uh, inside, we've got it uh, arranged to seat for 36, um, 10 of those seats being around the bar. Um, and it's, uh, we're very happy with the space. It's everything we wanted to try to achieve um, with sort of a little bit of elegance. Be, it being a wine bar, we need a little bit of sort of, uh, I guess, classiness, uh, but also making it comfortable and, and, you know, pull up a chair, sit down, relax, and uh, make it feel like you're at home and, and stick around for a while. It looks really different than, I don't know how many of our listeners will have been to Bennett's Bistro, but I remember the last time I was here, the space looked very different. How much work did you guys have to do to make this transformation? <laughs> Let's just say that it truly was a labor of love. Yeah. Uh, we had to put quite a lot of elbow grease into it. And uh, between Tim's previous experience doing construction and whatnot, uh, it was certainly a benefit to have that on board. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't too uh, versed in it myself, but we plugged away. On, uh, on, I'm a hard worker myself and easily learn. So He's a quick learner. Good. <clears throat> So yeah. Um, what were some of the challenges that you guys ran into coming into a space that was sort of just up sure. and left by the last owners? Just about everything. <laughs> the age of the building, uh, I mean, anyone who's done any kind of renovation on uh, an older house, this particular house, uh, I believe, is uh, give or take a few years, about 120 years old. Yeah. So anyone who's done any kind of renovating in a house like that, I mean, you just, from your electrical to, there's not a, a, a you know, 90 degree in the place. Um, there's never a, a right angle. Everything's a little bit off here, a little bit off there, or a lot bit off. Mm -hmm. um, so a combination of just a really old building uh, with you know 120 years of you know different plumbers coming in and different electricians coming in, and some who know what they're doing, a lot who don't. Uh, you know the Mickey Mouse contractors coming in and doing their stuff. So that presented a lot of frustrations, really, just trying to find uh, you know what people had done before and how you can try and correct it. And, mm -hmm. I mean, Brad will contest to the fact that it just trying to take a simple screw out sometimes took 15 nice. minutes because it was just a, a mess yeah. in a lot of places. Yeah. Yeah, it certainly was. The challenges of something simple or what should be simple like hanging a ceiling fan, which ends up taking five hours because of the Band-Aid solutions that, you know, previous yeah. tenants or occupants have used. Yeah. Uh, it ends up that you have to take six, six, six steps back in order to take one step forward. Yeah. Right? Well, it looks really great, and I know the... Um, you know the the bar that you've got there and the the decor and all that it is very classy so congrats okay. on doing that <laughs> we have actually received uh, quite a few comments from uh, our clients over the last few days um, and it just validates everything that we've put into it. Yeah. Our, our vision and and you know we we pretty much started off in February the discussion of taking this place over and achieving a specific feel a, sp mm -hmm. a specific ambiance a specific vision behind it and um, uh, our customers are now validating that everything that we've put into it uh, yeah. and we've achieved. Yeah. So what exactly was that vision that you guys had back in February and how did you... Um, similar to what I what I touched on was, yeah. you know, just sort of that, that element of class um, mm -hmm. and, and, and really knowledge and passion. Um, mm -hmm. Passion probably being at the forefront. Uh, Brad and I have both, you know, got culinary backgrounds, mm -hmm. um, you know, almost 40 years experience uh, in the kitchen between the two of us and... Uh, anyone who stayed in the industry that long as a chef will tell you that you have to love what you're doing yeah. um, and you have to have a real passion for food. It's, it's long days, it's long nights. Um, you know, Brad uh, is a, a father and uh, anyone who has family in this industry to try and raise your children and be a part of them growing up when you're working 14, 15 hour days, six, mm -hmm. seven days a week. It's very challenging. So you have to love what you're doing. Um, so we really want, finally we're in a position where we can bring our passion mm -hmm. Uh, and everything that we love about creating food and mm -hmm. creating an experience of pairing food with wines, uh, learning about wines, and just be able to bring that to people's plates mm -hmm. and, and give them a touch of what drives us yeah. 
what we found so interesting and exciting. Uh, I use the term food geeks all the time. I mean, we really are. We've tasted some of the our white port that we tasted. I mean, Brad and I just within three seconds after sipping it, we're like, oh my God, we could put that with this cheese and then we could do this with it and we could do that with it. And yeah. it was literally like a couple of kids in a candy store. Yeah. So uh, we're really, really happy to be in a position where we can start to now um, you know, express ourselves and our passion mm-hmm. uh, through this format at, mm-hmm. at 327 Wine Bar and bring that to people who uh, will hopefully really enjoy the experience. And yeah. At the same time as well, um, you know, you go through this industry, the there's always something to learn. Yeah. Um, and we've been, you know, uh, in the back of the house in the kitchen for such a long period. Now we're starting to branch out into the front of the house and mm-hmm. um, uh, we've got some decent tutors within the, the wine world. Our sommelier, Ray Wallace, who's been great helping us establish our wine list to this point. This is something that we get to venture into. It's something that we've always enjoyed, the passion of wine itself, but now it's the knowledge and the familiarity and the contacts and whatnot that we get to develop within the wine world, yeah. uh, which is a driving force behind what we're doing right now. Yeah. So what wines and maybe pairings are you guys most excited to be bringing to Ottawa? Well, the first thing, uh, I've always been a, a, a really big fan of the Zinfandel grape um, for a, a bunch of different reasons. Um, the major one, obviously, is I just I love the flavor profile of a Zinfandel. I love the dynamic of what that grape can be used for. Um, and, and the other fun thing about it is when you say Zinfandel uh, and you, you recommend a Zinfandel to somebody, most people or a lot of people will be like, oh, but I, I don't like plush. And it's like, well, actually, a Zinfandel is a, it's a red grape and mm-hmm. it, it's not a white Zinfandel. You mix it with a white grape to make the white Zinfandel. Yeah. And you kind of catch people off guard and then it's a little bit of a story and yeah. explaining about the Zinfandel grape. Um, it's a really, really, uh, we have, um, it's the McManus Zinfandel and it's a uh, really, really full-bodied, well-rounded, uh, uh, complex uh, wine that goes incredibly well with our cheeses that we have right now. Now our cheeses are going to you know rotate as, mm-hmm. as we go through um, but we've got you know your average cheese that you would get from the grocery store is anywhere from 10 to 15 dollars a kilo. Mm-hmm. You know our cheapest cheese is 37 dollars a kilo. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we're going for really really good quality ingredients. We don't have a huge menu uh, but what we do have is good quality ingredients and, and really balanced nicely um, and geared towards the wines that we have. Um, that McManus Zinfandel goes great with any of our cheeses. Uh, so if you were to get the charcuterie platter, uh, so you get some nice cured meats, um, you get the salt and the sweetness and the tart of some of the cheeses uh, mixed with the full-bodied Zinfandel, it's just a really, really dynamite balance. Awesome. We're doing our best with the menu, as small as it is, to be able to focus um, as much as we can locally yeah. uh, or through artisanal suppliers. Um, Tim has been mentioning our cheeses and it's a local Ottawa supplier that we get it from called Sirius Cheese which works out of a a, a store called Grace in the Kitchen just on Hazeldean Road in Canada and I mean if if you haven't been I invite you to go they have a dynamite little store it's really cool all the kitschy little fun uh, you know jams and jellies and breadsticks and whatnot that you can possibly get it's all it's all really well thought out, mm-hmm. uh, and Serious Cheese works out of that operation as well. So they follow that same mantra with these artisanal cheeses that they bring in from around the world, yeah. and they're fantastic. Yeah, I noticed you guys do have um, Bose beer coasters here, and yeah. mm-hmm. have you been? Well, it sounds like you've been really deliberate about you know choosing that sort of local fare and local flavors. Is that something that you've? tried to do in the past or do you think that you're filling a new niche there? I, I think it's a trend in the industry. Yeah. Um, I support and, and will always push local. Um, it's troublesome to me when you know, you're getting asparagus from halfway across the world because mm-hmm. um, you just think about the carbon footprint. Uh, you know, I think everyone has to be more aware of what they're eating, where it's coming from. It's certainly a trend. Uh, it's certainly people are paying more attention to it uh, and we certainly want to contribute to that we want to make people aware of you know what support local farmers Um, yeah it's not necessarily as consistent in terms of the availability but once you submerge yourself in that culture you're always going to be able to get good quality ingredients um, and and fairly consistently all year round Mm -hmm. obviously with fresh you know, produce were limited by the season of, of you know the never-ending winter. It seems in Ottawa, but 
Um, there's a lot of local places where you will get good quality stuff. There's uh, local grow houses where you're going to get great quality tomatoes all year round mm-hmm. without having to get them in from, you know, the southern states or something. So uh, local and sustainable is something that we're really on board with, um, and, and we want to help sort of uh, continue that drive to make people aware. Yeah. Now we got Tim's pick for wine and food. Brad, I'm just wondering, you're going to be in the kitchen for the first couple of weeks. What are you excited to be uh, whipping up back there? Um, in, from the kitchen, well, let me jump in. I, uh, I thought originally my, um, uh, my one of my favorite wines on the list would have yeah. been a red, because I've always been a fan of the red wines, but the one that blew me away was our Quails Gate Chardonnay. Mm-hmm. And to interject, the little Looney Tunes. <laughs> Uh, the Quailsgate Chardonnay is just, it's so finely oaked and it, it's just like drinking butter. Um, again, not something that I would have tended towards, um, but it, it pairs so very well with uh, any of our seafood options on our menu for sure. Um, so for fun in the kitchen, um, generally just being able to work with uh, the local ingredients. Um, I, I'm, a, a cheese freak myself. <laughs> um, also, uh, for our charcuterie platter, we're looking at uh, uh, the deli meats that we're using are um, Niagara, uh, prosciutto, and brizola. Um, what else do we have? A capicola as well. Mm-hmm. We have uh, uh, locally made dry cured sausages as well, which uh, accompany and, and different jams and, and preserves that will go on the platter as well. Um, one of Tim's recipes that he came up with and something that we've been focusing on uh, for the menu itself uh, if, instead of working vegetarian options into it, we figured we'd broaden that horizon and work in vegetarian vegan options onto mm-hmm. the menu uh, to couple a whole broad array, uh, mm-hmm. array of uh, dietary restrictions mm-hmm. that are so prevalent uh, in today's eating habits um, so uh, again uh, one of Tim's uh, recipe is this is a uh, vegan madras curry which is it's just fantastic the flavors again it, it pairs very well with our uh, our quailsgate chardonnay mm-hmm. uh, also the uh, obsession the symphony yeah. grape what doesn't pair with the obsession yeah <laughs> it's a good point it's a good point uh, that's probably my second favorite pairing is yeah. the vegan madras curry with we tried it with we have two sparklings um, while the obsession isn't necessarily uh, qualified uh, or, or labeled as a sparkling. It does it, have an effervescence. It has a little, yeah, effervescence yeah. on the on the tongue when you drink it. But um, we tried it with the, our hinterland sparkling white, and uh, then the uh, obsession, Ironstone obsession, which is the symphony grape. And they were both really good. But you had it with the hinterland uh, sparkling, and then you had it with the obsession. Mm-hmm. And once you had it with the obsession, it was just wow. Was that ever? Yeah. You know, it's if you didn't love the obsession grape uh, yeah. or the that wine to begin with, you have it with that curry, and it just brings you to a, a completely different uh, dynamic of that wine. So, uh, hands down, my second favorite yeah. pairing. But uh, very pleased with how that recipe's turned out. The the vegan curry. It's uh, I took what was a a, a meat recipe essentially. It's yeah. uh, originally done with chicken, um, and and just eliminated the chicken from mm-hmm. it and and used a soy product. Uh, this it's a dehydrated soy chip, mm-hmm. and it's turned out fantastic really really good and we also have a vegan bread uh, to serve with it or a, a papadam which is also mm-hmm. vegan so um, lots of options there mm-hmm. and, and Brad essentially you know uh, hit the nail on the head when um, if you're gonna go vegetarian why just you know why not go vegan because mm-hmm. uh, I, I have friends who are vegan and uh, there's not a lot of options for for vegans out there to go uh, in Ottawa I mean Toronto's doing an excellent job at really bringing it to the forefront um, but there's not a heck of a lot of places in Ottawa where you can go for vegan and have, uh, you know, a, a great vegan experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've tried a few places and, and it's been good. Um, but I, I really think that, you know, people need to be more aware of that and, and at least have one or two offerings for vegans yeah. out there because there's, it's a huge awareness and there's lots of them out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and it's just common courtesy to cater to them really you know mm-hmm. the same way you would um, an allergy or, or anything else mm-hmm. I think one of the most enjoyable aspects at this point in working uh, with my business partner is that it's been so long since we've had an opportunity to officially work together mm-hmm. um, and being in the kitchen um, technically you know as a chef you're, you're the one in charge you're the one making the decisions and whatnot but 
with our relationship and what we've been through uh, and the level of experience that we have, it's great to be able to put, be pushed and, and or shown different directions with things, right? So still, even at this stage, we're learning from one another. We're adapting different principles that we've had in the past in order to make the Always philosophy will. here. Yeah, and that's just yeah. it, right? The day we think we know everything in this industry is the day we should think, you know, the day that we should be turning around and walking right out, right? Mm -hmm. So realistically, I mean, if we've started, we've, we've received so many great comments from our loyal clientele already, from our fa family and friends and our new regulars that are coming in. Um, if, you know, realistically, and I don't want to sound arrogant, but if this is the way we've started, I just I, I look so forward to the next three to six months of, of seeing what we can achieve together, mm -hmm. right? Where we can go and you know how we can impact our community. I was thinking more three to six years, but oh, okay. <laughs> oh, you want to take the long road? That's okay. Well, thanks for chatting, guys. Um, I'm wondering if one of you can just tell us where to find you, what your hours and days that you're open are. Three uh, three twenty seven Somerset Street West. We're in between Bank Street and O'Connor. Uh, our hours of operation are Tuesday to Saturday, 4 p.m. till close, and close will typically be, uh, you know, the earliest we'll ever close is, is 12.30, um, but if you want to come in at, you know, 1.30 on a, on a Thursday evening and sit down for a four-course meal, we're going to be cooking food right till you want to leave. Obviously, we can't serve alcohol any later than 2 o'clock, but um, we're certainly more than, than happy to accommodate any late-night diners, and um, that's one thing that we're... Uh, you know, to touch on that just before we finish up, that there's not a lot of places in Ottawa where you can go get a late night dining experience, and there's a lot of shift workers in the city. Mm -hmm. So, to be able to offer a, you know, come in, sit down, to have an out, sit down for an hour and a half, and have three or four courses, and and en enjoy a good meal, mm -hmm. uh, starting at eleven, eleven thirty at night. Not too many places you can do that. So we're excited to be able to uh, open our doors to people who'd be interested in that. True, just like your second living room almost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. yeah. Thanks, guys. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you.